two and a half years ago, I stood before a similar gathering in Tokyo as Afghanistan was beginning its political and security transition. Today, a new national unity government has taken charge of the country's futures. It gives me a great pleasure to congratulate the Afghan people. At Tokyo, we recognize that Afghanistan's economic transformation would, let, would take at least another decade. Much progress has been made since 2002. Per capita GDP has more than tripled. More than 9 million children, including 3.6 million girls, attend school. And public financial management has been strengthened significantly. But the political and security transition of the last two years has not been easy. We estimate that growth has fallen sharply to 1.5% in 2014. And if you compare with the average growth of 9% during the previous decade, revenue a drop to 8.7% of GDP from a high of 11.6% in 2011, leaving a large unfinanced fiscal gap. The international community has responded with urgent assistance through the ad hoc facility of the Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund. However, the magnitude of the unfinanced gap means that arrears will be carried forward. This is the time to act with courage and decisiveness. Today, Afghanistan and its partner are reaffirming their partnership at this critical time. Our joint response will need to match the magnitude of the challenges. Let me highlight three key areas that need our joint attention. First, we need to stay focused on the poorest and the most vulnerable people. Poverty in Afghanistan remain high and persistent at 36%. We need to continue to invest in services like health and education to break the vicious circles, cycles in which so many Afghans are trapped. This is as much about improving lives of its about building hope as well as confidence. And of course, Afghanistan will need to pay attention, especially in improving opportunity for girls and women, so that all Afghans can contribute and benefit from the success of their nation. Second, we need to ensure that private sector can create jobs that the country needs so badly. Every year, 400,000 young Afghans enter the labor force. If they don't find work, it will be impossible to build a stable society. Businesses, small and large, create jobs, but they need stability. A smooth conclusion to the political and security transition is paramount in reducing uncertainty. Private sector confidence will also require addressing weaknesses in the financial sectors, investment climate, and the land tenure system. The World Bank Group stand ready to work with you on business climate reform and supporting innovative public-private partnership. In the medium term, agriculture, mining, and services hold the promise of driving the transformation from public to private job creation. Reform to stimulate agriculture productivity and an expansion of mining can accelerate growth to 7% during the next decade. Finally, restoring fiscal stability while supporting the development progress is an urgent priority. In Tokyo, we said that Afghanistan would need to make steady progress towards self-reliance by improving domestic revenue, 
securing more on budget assistance, and prioritizing spending. This priority has not changed. Improving revenue requires immediate, credible, and decisive reform, including implementing the custom action plan, improving taxpayer compliance, and strengthening governance, especially by, strength, uh, by fighting corruption. It is really encouraging to hear the commitment of the Afghanistan leaders to fight corruption, which need to be translated now into effective action and enforcement. We know that financing security and development needs will require considerable donor grant assistance through 2025. But to be effective, more of this support should be handled on budget so that aid is prioritized along government program. This will also lead to more money being spent locally, ensuring tangible results. More on budget needs to be accompanied by strengthening the government's capacity to implement and to build a strong fiduciary work framework. And the Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund provide a transparent vehicle for this purpose. As Afghanistan priorities ex prioritize expenditure in line with available resources, care will be needed to ensure that economic recovery is not constrained and development progress is not compromised. This includes ensuring adequate funding for operation and maintenance. <laughs> Let me close by saying that Afghanistan has the opportunity to leverage its unique geographic location at the heart of Asia to meet the region's growing need for energy and water and to explore opportunity for labor migration. The Central South Asia Kaza transmission line demonstrates Afghanistan's emerging role as a regional economic partner. And yesterday's agreement on the price and the power purchase will secure the progress of this important project implementation. We look forward to our continued partnership with the people and the government of Afghanistan and the international community in our collective effort to make the country a more secure and prosperous place for all Afghans. Thank you very much.